I know this video is long, but stay with me. I have a ton of information, personal video clips, and links that I want to share with you that I wish I would have had during my elective amputation. This is the hardest decision I've ever had to make, but maybe showing my journey will help others remember who they are. We are not defined by our circumstances. I know you have a bucket list, and so do I. So scared or not, let's take back control of our own destiny because we are worth it. I feel like this is one of the most important parts of elective amputation, so I decided to get gussied up for you, but I don't do it very often because it takes a couple of hours to go from a total dump truck to full hair and makeup. Hey friends, if we haven't met yet, my name is Carrie and I am super excited that you're watching this. I hope I can enlighten you about the struggle of elective amputation healing and how to help the ones that you love. If you know someone facing this, please feel free to share this video with them so that they can understand what might be coming their way and how to prepare for it. Also, if you want to see my brand new prosthetic next week, hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you'll be the first to know. As soon as I get that thing, nothing will be able to stop me. I am so excited. I cannot wait to get this. This channel will then be filled with the content of travel, being a mom ABT, homeschooling, and the learning curves along the way. You won't want to miss any of this. I see this question all the time from the ABT groups that I'm a part of. They ask questions like, did your spouse leave you after you had an elective amputation? Or how do I care for the one that I love so much but they're being so cranky and crabby because they just went through this traumatic amputation experience? So I wanted to enlighten you a little bit on how the mind of the amputee works while they're healing. First of all, if you're in a rocky place in your relationship, do work on you first before you go through this traumatic experience. Trauma can only make things worse. It can bring you together, yes, but more often than not, I see it tear amputees' families apart and you don't want that. And honestly, I think it's because we, the amputee, are hurting and alone. No one around us really fully understands the mental, emotional, and physical pain that we're going through. And as much as we cry out for their understanding, the one trying to love us and care for us isn't capable of fully understanding unless they have been through an amputation themselves. So I would say try to remember that they wouldn't be there if they didn't love you and try to reach out on an amputation forum for the support and understanding that you need rather from that loved one who is trying desperately to love you and understand but they don't really know how. I will link some of the groups that I'm a part of in the description below. Try to be empathetic to the caregiver around you because again, they wouldn't be there in that situation if they didn't love you and they don't wanna be in this situation any more than you do. If you find yourself in that place of mental exhaustion or depression or things like that, make sure you reach out to someone, anyone, a friend, a loved one, a doctor, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that somebody is aware of what's mentally going on in your head so that they can monitor you and help you through those struggles. Because this is a traumatic experience. I spent a year getting ready for this and it still took me by surprise of how depressed I got and how vulnerable I felt. I should have worked on some physical therapy before having my elective amputation, but I thought that they would teach me in the hospital how to stand up from the floor or from the potty. I thought they were going to teach me how to fall properly to avoid falling on my little nub, but they didn't. All I learned was how to hop upstairs, don't do this, and how to walk on a walker. I didn't know to ask because I was in a place of healing. My brain was foggy from the anesthesia. I was only in the hospital two days and I wasn't really in my right mind and I've never done this before. I, it's not up to me to know what to ask for. When I got home, I was stuck. We had to figure it out. Now I can do all of these things, but learning them put a strain on not only myself, but my husband as my caregiver. We didn't know what we were doing and I'm sure we did many things unsafely. Pull up right here. So I want to try to give you some tools of things that you can do to get ready because you might be in the same place in the hospital and not really know what to ask for. Practice trying to get up from certain positions with only one leg or one whatever is left of depending on what limb you're amputating. But if you have time to prepare for this, 
Work out a little bit. Try different things as if you didn't have that limb anymore. If you're going to be missing an arm, try brushing your hair, or washing your hair, or brushing your teeth, or doing everyday activities like cooking without an arm first. I didn't do any of that and I wish I would have. Also, work on building muscle in your remaining limbs. I didn't jump on the eye walk like I thought I would directly after surgery. I thought I was going to be mobile and just walk around on the eye walk and not have to worry about it. But I was left in a wheelchair for eight weeks scooting up and down the stairs, which takes a lot of arm muscle. I also had to get off the floor or stand up from a chair on one leg. This again takes a lot of muscle. Do yourself a favor and start now. You've probably heard me say it already a ton of times, but get ready internally also. You need to be as ready as you can be to fight whatever is going to come your way and give your body a premium chance of healing everything that it can quickly. Take vitamins, mainly vitamin D, vitamin C, and magnesium. Vitamin C because of infection. Vitamin D because it absorbs all the other vitamins into your body. And magnesium because every single cell in your body needs it. And most of us are starving for magnesium because of our empty food system. Tell me how many of these you have. I had 11 out of the 16 before I started taking it. Muscle twitches, muscle cramps, muscle spasms, muscle weakness, numbness, tingling, osteoporosis, mental disorder, fatigue, high blood pressure, irregular heartbeat, tremors, high stress and anxiety, headaches, migraines, insomnia, and sleep disorders, you guys. And I will post that in this video right above. At the very least, please, please, please cut out toxic sugar and chemicals a few months before your amputation so your body doesn't have to work as hard through those chemicals and it can solely focus on healing. I'll post everything I did to get ready for the amputation in the description below. It's called my holistic home video. Okay, so on the topic of financial, we had one major, 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 major help. And this is single-handedly the probably the most important thing financially preparation-wise that I can give you. Cook meals ahead of time. Calculate how many meals it will take for you to have dinner for you and your family. Make bag crock pot meals and put them in the freezer. Make big lasagnas in those baking pans and put them in your freezer. There are a ton of recipes on Pinterest and Google so that you don't get bored, but it's super, super important so that your caregiver doesn't have to spend a whole lot of time or money trying to feed you and your family in order to get through the healing process. Also, reach out to other organizations around you, sports groups that you're a part of, church, friends groups, um, homeschool groups, school groups, whatever, to have a meal train set up for you. People love to help, and if you ask, they would be more than happy to put together something for you, and they'll share it with their friends and family. I was blown away by the people wanting to support my family. My support system was not who I thought it would be either. I never even heard from some of the ones that I thought I was closest to. You will be super surprised at how far Amazon gift card donation list or meal train will spread on social media. I will be forever grateful for my community and the ones that donated to us. This is probably one of the best things that got us through this difficult time. Since my husband has never had to make meals for our family, he switched roles into caregiver and came home from his job. And during this eight weeks, he has not had to make a single meal. This is a huge time, money, and stress saver. And I can't stress it enough that this is one of the best things you can do to get ready for an elective amputation. And to the ones who donated, I can never repay you, but I am praying that the windows of heaven just open on you and your family and pour down so many blessings you could never contain at all. Thank you so, so much for being so generous. Okay, so I have never been one to sit around all day ever. Even on a broken, dislocated foot for the past 10 years, I worked 40 hours a week as a hairstylist standing all day in heels. I had to stand in heels because my heel doesn't touch the floor. Or didn't before I amputated it. 
Also, I did everything at my home because a lot of the time, my husband was an over the road truck driver. So I, it was all on me to do all of the laundry, all of the grocery, all of the shopping, all of the cooking, all of the cleaning of the house. I'm used to taking care of animals, mowing the lawn, weeding the flower beds, remodeling my home, running all of the errands, making all the homemade dinners every night and being a mom as well as a full-time job. And a lot of my friends and family, if you ask them, I got this all the time. Carrie, how do you have so much energy? Carrie, how do you get all this done? And I just told them, I don't have a choice. I was made different. God made me to work. I am a workhorse. That's who I am. And now I can't. Even with my previous foot surgeries, I never took the healing break that I needed, which is probably why I'm sitting here today talking about elective amputation. So I wanted to make sure that during this time, this healing time, I did everything perfectly. I stayed put, I sat in my bed for the eight weeks, I did what I was told because this is my last chance. It's not like I can just go have another surgery to fix my foot, it's gone. It's time to grow up, sit still, obey the rules, and not get myself in trouble again. So for me to electively amputate my foot, I knew I would need to sit. However, I did not realize how this would mentally affect me. For the first week, I was solely focused on healing and getting to know my new way of life, but the weeks following, I became extremely lonely. My bedroom is upstairs, away from the main living area of our home, so the kids would regularly come up to play, but there were hours and hours and hours spent alone, reading a book, watching TV, playing on my phone, working on my computer, or making videos. I kind of felt like a prisoner in my own bed because I was on antibiotics. They crashed my system and made my stomach hurt every day. So I was really scared to leave the house and catch something that might be detrimental to my limb. And I was scared to do anything wrong too. I've never been in this position before and it made me nervous that I wouldn't be able to fix it if something went wrong. The only thing I can really relate to my elective amputation being is kind of like a newborn baby. You get ready for it all this time and then it happens and you just sit there and watch it carefully. I had to make sure it didn't get sick or that it was comfortable. Is this in a good position? Does it look weird? I had to make my best guess if it was trying to tell me something. It kept me up all night because of the pain. What color is it? Is it too hot? Is it too cold? During the days when I tried to spend time with my family, they weren't allowed to get close to me for fear that it would get hurt. Much like holding a baby constantly. Don't touch it. Don't look at it. Don't talk about it. But all this did was further isolate me and my little baby nub. I don't know that it was wrong. I feel like it was necessary to make sure that it healed properly. But what I'm trying to say is that it does take an emotional toll on you and the ones around you. It's not normal for somebody to be isolated and it can be painful. Giving up total control of the house was not easy either. My husband has totally different way of managing than I do. I could see the world I built slowly fading away as I sat in my room unable to be part of the life around me. And it's not that he was doing anything wrong. It's just different from the way that I do it. And I felt like he wasn't disciplining the kids as well as I do. So I'm going to have to backtrack and teach them all these things again. But in the big picture, in the grand scheme of things, none of this that was going on around me was detrimental at all. It's all things that can be easily fixed or changed later on when I get my leg and everybody's firing on all cylinders again. So I had to remember to just stay in my lane, which was healing, and let him do the best that he can while doing a job that he's not necessarily ready to take on. I would hear my kids play outside my window and all I could do was watch and listen. So that was kind of hard. But I know this is a temporary situation, but in the moment it wasn't. In those moments, it's lonely. In those moments, your heart falls. And what I want you to understand is that those moments are gonna happen. So expect them to happen and have a pick me up plan for when that does happen. Maybe write some scriptures down or some um, quotes that you love and put them by your bed. I've also made self-love journals, which I'll put them in the description below. You can pick some of those up if you want. They're great tools on how to help love yourself in those times of kind of depression or loneliness. 
and I wanted to be downstairs and go places and I could have, but in order for me to do this, it was an extreme workload added to my husband who's already struggling. For me to go, he has to load the kids with their snacks, books, load the wheelchair, then come help maneuver me with the crutches down our front steps so that I don't fall. It's a balancing act of trying to get the kids out and me out and the wheelchair out all safely without kids running off here and me getting out and not tripping as well as when we arrive home. Everybody is tired and generally hungry. He has to unlock the door, remove the wheelchair, get it up the steps to the house, get the kids out into the house, get them safe and secure finally help me out and up the steps and when we finally make it inside it's a race to get people to the bathroom make food before everyone loses their shit. and it's also that i can go to target or the library with them so i just try to stay out of the way and make it easier on him and he has never said ever ever said that it's too much trouble he knows what I'm going through up here, and I know what he's going through down there. So in order for us to make it through this alive, unscathed, and still together, we have to have empathy for each other's situation, stay calm, stay patient, and really take care of the necessities rather than the wants right now. So now I am one week away from getting my prosthetic. I am so excited. I have started to gain a little bit of independence. I can go up and down the stairs on my own. I can take myself to the bathroom. I can get a drink or a snack on my own. I can actually get in the car and drive to a drive through place on my own. So if I was to drive and go pick up the groceries for my husband, that would be a help to him. And I'll link that right up here. And oh my gosh, I can have Starbucks again. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> because God bless America, they have a drive through and I, but I'm still very guarded when it comes to healing, but I'm also able to afford some small mistakes here and there, like bumping it on the wall on accident or letting it dangle a little bit too long or when the kids come running in the room and they accidentally stomp on it, hopefully miss it, but nine times out of 10, they generally touch it in some way on accident, of course. But I feel like that's just part of being an amputee mom. Kids aren't careful. Kids are in their own world. They leave their Legos out. They go running and tearing through the house to go see the garbage truck outside with no regard for anyone around them, especially the one who just had their leg cut off. So if you're going to go through this, keep in mind your children and their presence in your home. Keep in mind the person that's going to be caring for you. Keep in mind your own mental, physical, financial and emotional state right now. See if you can get that in a better place, the very best place that you can possibly get that at before you do this because it is very taxing on all of those fronts. I really hope that this helped you guys. I hope that your amputation goes smoothly if you're gonna go through that. If you have a loved one that is going to go through this, please feel free to share this video with them. I only do this to help other people and I will see you guys on the next video, which is my prosthetic.